everyone, welcome to Faywood Mead. You can call me Mandy or Faye, whichever. It doesn't really matter to me. Strawberry Mead has uh, been my most viewed mead. As of today, it has over, over two and a half thousand <laughs> views, at least the first video does. And I am like, oh God. I didn't add nutrients. I didn't stabilize. I didn't do a lot of things. So here we are. We are making strawberry 2.0. Very much an updated recipe. I should not be fermenting strawberries this time. Because that video has so many views, I just feel like if the process sort of repeats itself with 2.0 over here, um, I wanna make sure that I'm I guess kind of thorough or more thorough than I normally am. Just for the sake of new mead makers, I want to try to explain a little bit more than I normally do. So right now I do have a little bit of liquid, a little bit of honey liquid in here at the moment, um, just because I kind of overfilled my pot. I tend to like to warm up my honey a little bit just to blend with water. If you just pour honey straight in here, you're gonna have a thick layer and then you just have to shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it until your arms are dead. Usually it says on the yeast packet how warm the water should be when you start waking those little babies up. So usually your mead should be a little bit warmer too. And of course the quality of water does affect the flavor of your mead. It affects the growth of your yeast, the health of your yeast. These are all little things to just kind of think about. So I used about two and a half pounds of Dutch gold clover honey. I wanted just like kind of like a neutral honey flavor. So just real quick like here, I am gonna shake this for a little bit. Just really wanna make sure that honey is getting blended while you're essentially making your traditional mead, your yeast. It'll tell you what to do on the packet. Now today I'm using Mangrove Jack's mead yeast. It's a high ester producing strain gives fresh floral esters, especially when fermented cool. Hmm. This can also get up to 18%. So if you just wanna push your yeast to their limit, you would probably end up with like a super, super strong mead, which I wouldn't really recommend with something as delicate as strawberry, you know? Oh, okay. Sprinkle context, contents directly onto a maximum of six gallons. Usually your yeast wanna like wake up first, but I will follow the directions, Mangrove Jack. Now, another reason we want to shake is to add oxygen into the mead because yeast do need oxygen to, to create energy and to grow and multiply basically. Something you do wanna be careful of is you don't want your must to be too hot because you could kill your yeast. My little temperature thingy says it is about 86 degrees in here. It's right around at a gallon, which is what we want. We don't want to close this headspace too much because heaven forbid it bubbles over because that sucks. We don't want that to happen. I am gonna take a gravity reading. So the point of a hydrometer is to measure the sugar content and that is how we end up reading how much alcohol will be present in your meat. So it bounces around and floats like that. There are several numbers on these things. There's one in particular that we look at. I need to put this down <laughs> to read it correctly. So this is at about 1.086. And because this was fully sanitized with star sand, this just makes sure there aren't any bacterias and you know unwanted things present that could potentially spoil your mead. Okay, I'm just gonna pour this in. We've got about a half a packet here. It's been sitting in my fridge for a little while, so I hope it's still alive. Usually when you wanna use a packet, I think within a month. So I hope it's okay. I guess we will find out. I'm just gonna mix this in. In my airlock, I have sanitized water. You don't wanna just put regular water in there because it can get moldy. That's the whole thing with sanitizer is it gets rid of bacteria and things. Plus if little bugs find their way in here, which they will, little fruit flies especially, they'll get stuck and they can't make their way into your mead. You need nutrients. <laughs> if you do not have nutrients, added into your mead. The yeast will become very, very stressed and angry. They will add some not so great tastes to your mead and it could come out tasting like rocket fuel. Now you can use, I've never done it. There's something called the Tosna 
method, T-O-S-N-A. I think you can just look it up on the internet. I always just follow the instructions on my Fermade K container. This says to add one and a half teaspoons per five gallons. A Fermade K at the end of the lag phase, and that's usually between 12 and 24 hours. And then the same amount around one third sugar depletion, which I think is like five-ish days or so. Um, I mean, if you really wanna do it right, then you have to like measure it along the way and I never do that. Now, especially when there's nothing else in here, I think usually it's recommended that you do another feeding. You kind of like sort of step feed in a way because you wanna make sure they don't get mad. It's just honey is the only thing they have to go on and honey is very complex. It can be difficult to break down and consume. I'm just gonna add uh, an eighth, I guess an eighth of a teaspoon right now. I'm gonna put some in here so the yeast have something else to eat besides honey. All right, well, that is it. This is step one. I hope I explained things okay. Again, I don't really go into a lot of detail because I think a lot of the people who watch my channel are more on the experience side. You know, it's like once you get once you get over the beginner hump and you start to understand things, a lot of the, the repetition can become wearisome. Wearisome? Wearisome. Sometimes it can take a week, sometimes it can take two weeks, three weeks, up to a month for your yeast to finish doing what they need to do. Alrighty, we'll see you in a few seconds. Just continuing on with this video. So, what I did, because <laughs> I am notorious for forgetting to put things in bags, thus creating a larger mess for myself to rack through. Uh, so I bought some strawberries, they are on sale right now. Amazing, I love late spring. Any kind of like outlet grocery, you're gonna be able to find berries for like really cheap. So last night I sanitized them, I sliced them into small slices because I want as much surface area as possible, especially putting them in these bags. Now I am using nut milk bags. Wait, did I stabilize this? Let's see where it's at, man. This should be fully fermented out. I started this on the 22nd of May. It is now June 8th. It's not done yet. All right, well, I just gave like a little smidgen of food. I guess the strawberries are going back in the freezer. April Fools! See you in a minute. Welcome back, here we are. I have four pounds. They're still like pretty much mostly frozen. Not gonna lie. Uh, strawberries, uh, and I'm just gonna rack on top of this. I forget that I'm like doing a full breakdown for everyone just in case you're new. So this is a racking cane and tubing. You do have to buy tubing separately from the actual cane portion. It's really cheap though. Like this is a super affordable tool. It's very effective. So when you're racking, this is the safest way to transfer mead from one vessel to the other. That's what racking means. The one that you're racking from needs to be higher from the one that you're racking to. The larger the space difference, the faster it'll go, just an FYI. And I did stabilize this mead. That is the other important thing. I did not show that on camera because it is super, super simple. Um, so when you stabilize, is potassium metabisulfite, um, a half a teaspoon per gallon to prevent fermentation from restarting. So it doesn't like kill your yeast, it just puts them to sleep. Like it stops them from being able to come back to life, <laughs> basically to like wake up. The other one is like a sterilant preservative is on because I do have some little fruit flies hanging about. I love these things. A subscriber sent them to me. I'm probably gonna let this sit for about two weeks or so. So I will see you here in a second. All right. Oh yeah, this didn't go dry. I think I might have forgotten about this mead and I didn't add nutrients correctly. So I hope that I don't have any like off flavors from angry yeast. This is only 9.7%, which is not very high, but that's okay. Maybe it'll make for easier drinking. This looks beautiful. So I, I left the strawberries in just barely over two weeks. So something that I learned very recently is that strawberries, if they are left to sit in your mead for too long, um, can impart a, a plastic-like flavor, and that's from the seeds. <laughs> Either you like skin the seeds off your strawberries or you just don't leave them in for very long, I guess. I hadn't noticed it before in any of my strawberry meads, but then again, I also like 
typically remove strawberries at about two weeks. Most fruit, actually, I remove around two weeks. But it's going to need some balancing because I haven't done barely anything to it, as we know. I have to be uh, very careful right now to make sure that you're not pulling like a bunch of um, sediment into your fresh made because we want to get rid of that. We like clear product. Really, it's more for visuals than anything, but it's just nice to have a clear mead, you know what I'm saying? Oh boy, this is full. Good. <laughs> so far it's better than my first mead um, because I had like a gallon and a half because I did not measure correctly at all. This is gorgeous, okay? Let me just say. Oh my friends, look at this. Wow, wow, wee wow. So it ended at 1.012. Usually we want that down to a nice one because that means the yeast were healthy. They, they did their job well. Now I always, always, always sanitize everything. You want to keep things cleaned and sanitized because bacteria, man, it can infiltrate and absolutely destroy everything. I have tasted a bacterial infection before and it is not pleasant. <laughs> To say the least, it is pretty awful. I think it's around 1.016. Only like, what, four points of uh, gravity was added here? I'm just gonna close that up for now. Let's taste test this and see what needs to be done. Oh, wow. That smells so good. Quite tart. Very strawberry, <laughs> of course. Very happy. So there is basically no mouthfeel here. It hits you, tart, strawberry. I mean, there's a little bit of like a lingering aftertaste, but it's pretty much gone. What we wanna add is some tannin. I might look at another acid just to try to build some more body. Those are basically the, the two major things that you want to use to balance your mead and make it just a complete experience. As this is right now, like for, you know, if you're brand new and you're like, whoa, tannins, acids, all that, it's too much for me to think about. This is still actually very nice where it is. It's just a, it's like a very clean, quick drink. It's very light. Um, as it is, maybe a little bit chilled would be, would be nice. Uh, as, as like a first very simple mead, this is pretty chill as it is, but I wanna add those extra layers to make it go from good to great. Just kind of taking a look at what acids are present in strawberries, what we've already pulled from them. It's going to be citric acid by far is the highest, um, but it does also have malic acid and something else called elegic. We might not need any. However, I will add Tannin. So this says for like a white or rosé wine, use a quarter teaspoon per gallon. There's roundabouts, a quarter tisp. I wanna do like a little before and after taste, you know? Cause I am pretty new at um, acid tannin balance myself. Uh, tannin, you do need to like let it chill out for, <laughs> for like a couple of weeks. I think it's like three to six weeks. Um, if you don't add it during fermentation, you add it after, then you need to like let it settle before you bottle. But I'm gonna see if there's like a flavor difference right now that I can taste. <laughs> or not flavor, but mouthfeel difference. That's a difference. Now this does need some sweetening. Uh, I think where it is, you know, obviously there's sugar present, but just a little bit more would be nice and would also help bring down that, um, that high acid point. Um, but I think I'm also gonna add a little bit of lactose cause I'm digging the creamy vibe <laughs> to my meads and you know, a little bit of like strawberries and cream, right? Uh, it works very well together. I'm gonna add a teaspoon for now. And then since Christina is here, Maybe I will have her taste this and see how she feels about it too. <laughs> Miss Christina just popped on in. So this is like a teaspoon of lactose. What honey do I want to use to back sweeten? I'm gonna use Tupelo because I have it. It's fancy. So I have the strawberry before I added anything to it. If you wanna try this or not, um, just to get like 
a vibe for the original. Quite happy to try it. Okay, compared to the end result. It smells so, like strawberry jam. It tastes like honey and strawberries. <laughs> There's like no space. I'm gonna do a quarter cup. We're gonna do that. Two polo. I think I'm saying that right. Not quite a full quarter cup is what I'm adding. You want this spoon? It's a good spoon. <laughs> Just eating that honey straight is like, mmm, it's good. We try it with all of those things together and see how we're vibing. All right, before. Mm -hmm. We already talked about that. <laughs> After. So much more mouthfeel. Oh my God. Cheers. Okay. It's so much more complex. I, it's different. I wouldn't say it's that different. Mm -hmm. The more interesting thing is it's much more balanced. Yeah. Cause this is like getting smacked in the face with a strawberry. Yes. And it's good. It's really good. As it is. And it would be nice, you know, if you like decided to carbonate it for wine. I like a them wine. both for different reasons. Like this is yeah. more wine-like. Mm -hmm. Mouthfeel on this, it is, did not last at all, right? It's like this you get hit by works. strawberries and then it's clean, it's gone. Whereas yeah. this is like, it hangs out and... Lingers, definitely. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree with that assessment. Love it though. <laughs> We're just gonna let this sit and hang out for a few weeks and then um, let it clear because I don't think I'm gonna need to do anything else to this. It's really nice. This is like what I've been wanting to do with strawberries and then I always just had the awful luck of them re-fermenting on me. <laughs> just every time. Yeah, this is a very nice, clean strawberry vibe. So I am hyped to see how it is in a few weeks. So it's been about a month, and as you can see, this mead has cleared out beautifully. It is like crystal clear. And everything has settled out really nicely on the bottom. We love to see that. Makes racking so much easier. So the one piece of equipment that, um, that I haven't talked about yet that you will need for bottling, this is something that you definitely want. They're very affordable, so there's really, uh, not much of an excuse and trust me, it will make your life so much easier. So this is a bottling wand and this end just connects to the tubing of your auto siphon. And this is a valve release right here. So when you're bottling, you just push down and it will release liquid, you know, hypothetically, right? As long as this is working correctly, when you lift up, no mead or liquid of, of any kind will will come out. Uh, it does drip a little bit, which I think is normal. So you do wanna like jump to your next bottle as quickly as possible. So we're gonna be using that today. But first I need to rack and take all of this liquid off of the schmutz at the bottom. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, look at how pretty. Look at Clear. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's very clear. So I've got a bunch of different types and sizes of bottles here, as you can see. I like to use these itty bitty ones for potential competitions. Uh, so I've got four of those, and then I have several 420 milliliter bottles, as well as some 375s. You wanna make sure that you sanitize everyone very well. So because we already racked off of all the gross stuff at the bottom, you can take the, um, the little cap of your bottling wand off, because that's really just there to protect your auto siphon from picking up a lot of stuff. So you're gonna wanna push down on that wand and get your auto siphon going at the same time. It can be tricky the first time you try to do that. It took me a minute to figure it out. So you just push down and it fills. It's great. And you wanna bring the liquid as high up as you can, like basically stop right before, right before it starts to overflow, essentially. Oh. 
Ooh, there we go. I got a lot of meat out of this. It's nice. Okay, so I got four full 420 milliliter bottles and I got two, uh, almost three, 375 milliliter bottles and then four of these little uh, 187 milliliter bottles, which is pretty awesome. This is a lot of meat. I'm very happy with this. That's it. Look at how pretty. I know I've already been talking about this, but this mead is seriously so pretty. I'm very, very happy with the clarity of this. Stay tuned in the next section of this video is the tasting, the official tasting. Oh my God. So I've been recording. This wasn't, this wasn't on. I turned it on, but I didn't turn it to record like a dunderhead. <laughs> I've already had this. I drank it, but I'll drink it more for you. Trust me. It is a delight. Strawberry. <laughs> Here we go. Round two. This has been bottled for almost two months. Almost, not quite. As a little reminder, it's sweet and it's only 9.7%. Super drinkable. Super good. Let me tell you. So good. I mean, on the nose, it is like a strawberry dessert. It reminds me of like when you cook down strawberries and you make sort of like a strawberry chunky syrupy thing for angel food cake to like pour over it. So you just take strawberries and sugar and you boil them down a little bit, you know, and some water, and then you pour them on cake. And this is what that smells like. It smells like heaven, basically. <laughs> So good, a just sweet strawberry. And of course, honey, you know, I mean, it has that like sugary vibe to it. Mm. But the amount of honey that's in here isn't overpowering. Uh, it's perfect. It's not too syrupy. It has just this nice smoothness to it. And because the strawberries were not fermented, that is the key here, do not ferment your strawberries, that turns them into, we would have a completely different drink here. If you watch any of my past videos involving strawberries, you will see that because I didn't stabilize or I didn't stabilize correctly and the strawberries ended up fermenting, completely changes the flavor. I mean, 100%. It's, it's so vastly different that you would have to just ex like experiment yourself. I mean, it's just pure strawberry. <laughs> it's like biting into a strawberry. I don't know how much more I can describe that, but it's one of those fruits where like the, the flavor of the fruit doesn't really change. Um, some fruits do kind of shift a little bit. It's very good and it's so easy. It's a very simple mead to make. I'm, I'm very proud of this mead. It's a great like beginner's recipe because really you just have to make sure your yeast are happy, you're focusing on your base mead making, and then make sure it's stabilized one way or another. If the version of stabilizing that you're going for is just fermenting and pushing the yeast out to their tolerance as far as they can go, um, be careful with that. Give your mead a lot of time. When I first started my channel, that's what I was doing. I wasn't using metabisulfite or um, potassium sorbate. A, I ended up with super high, <laughs> high ABVs. I would use my hydrometer and I would test it, see where it was. A couple of weeks later, I'd test it again and it would seem to be fine, but your meads can slow in their ferment significantly and depending on when you're brewing as well. Uh, Cause if you were making mead in the colder months, you know, it can like stop and then start re-fermenting once it gets warmer out. Anyway, that's my two cents. There's not a whole lot to say about this because it's just delicious, sweet strawberry. I'm very proud of this. Uh, and I definitely encourage anyone out there to try it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Follow me on all of the things. I'll have all the links below. I'll have the recipe below. I appreciate you all. See you next time. Bye.